Hey everybody, KC here. So I had planned to talk today about the fact that Tuesday, the 22nd of February, was a Supermarket Employee Day uh, in the U.S., a day which has been designated by the food industry, the supermarket industry, to recognize uh, employees in supermarkets all over the country. And the idea was, was it started last year, the idea was basically to say, hey, you know, our employees got us through the pandemic. That was the initial, um, the initial impetus for the whole thing. But, you know, these are, our employees are what make a difference day after day. So we're going to take a day each year to, to recognize them and to kind of, you know, salute them in a very public way. Now, listen, I think it's terrific. I mean, I think it's great that supermarket employees um, be recognized, you know, from the very beginning of the pandemic. People talked about how essential employees were. But I just think this one day thing just rubs me the wrong way. I don't mean to be contrarian about it. But it just seems to me that, you know, it shouldn't just be a day, shouldn't just be a week, shouldn't just be a month. Basically, supermarkets, whether you're a big chain or you're an independent, uh, they have to have the tools and they have to have the culture that make the employee, okay, the frontline employees who are dealing with customers every day and dealing with all the stresses that are now involved with working in a, in a retail store, you have to celebrate that all the time. You have to find out, find ways to recognize it. You have to find ways to reward it. You have to find ways to invest in employees in such a way that they feel invested in the company and will continue to invest their blood, their sweat, their tears, their hours. Uh, that's really, really important. Uh, again, one day, nice, but really what the industry needs, I think, a lot of companies need, is a, a more concerted effort at focusing on the big picture. Not just saying how great the employees are, but finding ways on a day-to-day -day basis to really get them involved in the business and get them invested in the business by investing in them. And I think this is a much bigger deal than just having a day where we recognize them. Sometimes for me, the supermarket industry just thinks too small. I can remember years ago, the industry decided they were going to have one week uh, a year where they were going to talk about families should eat at home. And using all the research that says, listen, families that eat dinner together tend to have kids who are, do better in school, have le fewer drug problems, alcohol problems, they're better socialized, that sort of thing. And I can remember thinking then, oh, why are we talking about one week? Why is this not the centerpiece of an annual marketing program? that supermarkets focus on in terms of driving more and more sales of food that can be eaten at home. Now, it's good for the bottom line, it's good in terms of competing with the restaurant industry, and it has a real nice social ethical aspect to it as well. Again, not just a week. But it seems to me that the, the Supermarket uh, Employee Recognition Day becomes even more important right now. Uh, you know, Listen, we're all watching the news. Um, you know, I heard, uh, you know, somebody talking about war in Europe the other day. I was a friend of mine was telling me on the phone, yeah, we're, we're all dealing with war in Europe. War in Europe, it's a phrase that for the most part has been used in, a, in the way this fr friend of mine was using it since the 40s. Vladimir Putin is essentially threatening nuclear war um, on, on the United States and its allies. And, you know, I found myself thinking about that possibility this week in a way that I don't think I've thought about it since I was, you know, eight years old. And Sister John Ackerman was saying, well, if you want to sell your, save yourselves from um, nuclear annihilation, just get under your chairs and pray. I don't think either of them, quite frankly, at that point were going to do any good, at least not in terms of preventing annihilation. Um, so we're all stressed, right? We're watching the news. We're seeing the horrible events that are taking place in Ukraine. And we're feeling very strongly the possibility that this could spread, that this could be a, a much bigger deal and it could affect us all, even in the way, even beyond the, uh, the, uh, the impact that we're going to see in terms of inflation, higher gas prices. We're going to see, you know, probably more supply chain issues because of this. You know, the country hasn't even gotten past the pandemic yet. And now we're dealing with, um, with this particular situation, all of which adds up to an employee base that is incredibly stressed. They're thinking about this stuff too, and they may be dealing with, you know, the impact that they're feeling from higher gas prices and supply chain shortages may be even greater than the impact that their, their managers, their leaders, their corporate um, uh, C-level people are feeling. So this is the time not to just take a day, but to, to figure out within companies, okay, and I'm, not, I'm talking about people who are running corporations, 
I'm talking about people who are running stores and I'm talking about people running departments. How are uh, we all going to figure out how to create a culture of caring within our organizations that go beyond just simple recognition, but acknowledge the fact that we continue to live through very, very tough times, threatening times, challenging times, and that there's just this feeling of dread, this, this unease that, that's, that is all over the place. Employers, I think, can play a key role in at least helping their employees to deal with those issues. There's a lot of ways to do that. So, you know, this is what I think people have to work on. Going forward, this is a really important thing that leaders, you know, they actually have to lead. And, you know, new challenges get thrown at us all the time. But if you're going to lead, you got to be up to these challenges. Anyway, that's what's on my mind this morning. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.